Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today I'm at the Rock Island Auction Company to show you some exquisite original muzzleloaders. And what I have here is an engraved European combination flintlock pistol and hunting sword. This isn't the kind of thing that we get to see every day. Um, that's why I picked it out. It's kind of neat. Being a box lock, it's a little bit different than the muzzleloader, but uh, seeing that it uses black powder and a flintlock ignition, we're going to let it slide here today. It's a little hard to see from the actual lock side. So here on the uh, really, I guess, side plate or blade side of this piece. You can see the flintlock cock there a little bit better. You can see the frizzen. Much like we've seen a lot of flintlock muzzleloaders, we have a touch hole, but in this box lock, the touch hole is not on the side of the barrel. We have a direct vertical ignition into the barrel and into our primary charge, which then leads me to wonder, did you prime the pan on this piece or did you count on sparks from the flint falling into the main charge and igniting the main charge. If you were to pour priming powder in here, it would fall right into the main charge and, and really connect physically your priming to your main charge. So if you know, or if you have any experience with these, please let me know in the comments. Um, there's only so much that we're able to get it to a hold of here in the States. And I'd love to learn more about how this was used. To help stabilize the blade and keep it away from, uh, I guess, shooting <laughs> the front of the sword off, we have a small peg that connects it to the blade. And here on the blade side, you can see it's screwed in to, I think, give us some more support on this barrel so you couldn't crush or ding it and, uh, and haphazardly shoot off the end of your sword here. It's a really cute little lock system. There's not a whole lot of, uh, of real special things going on here. It's really just simple mechanics wrapped in an artful um, presentation here. Uh, there's not a whole lot on this piece that hasn't been decorated in some form or another. Even our pommel here, we have uh, what Rock Island calls a wild man. I think we could commonly call that a green man as well in Germanic lore. Kind of a little scary face there, but still neat to see. Coming around the trigger guard here, we have filed facets with a scene of a hunter with a staff here, kind of a classical figure. As we come around to this section here, we have a boar's head, really kind of a nasty looking boar, kind of coming up from the bottom. And then protecting our lock here, we have another classical scene of several classical figures kind of standing in an artful pose in a scene of several hunters taking down a stag with a <laughs> Uh, with massive antlers, I think, uh, kind of the dream stag, as many of us even today would see it. Around this side here, we have another stag running. And what's neat is we have a stag running, but the floral and leaf patterns here are shaped in a way to, you know, kind of imply the stag or deer running through a woods, trying to give us a setting for this scene. Even the blade underneath the barrel where we can't quite see it has been decorated. We see some more simple floral and scroll patterns. And then out at the muzzle of the blade, we get back into some more detailed scenes where we have a pair of hunting dogs chasing a stag and a boar. I really like the design of this boar. Um, he's really kind of cartooned, really chubby looking fellow there. I think he's having a hard time running away. <laughs> Along the other side too, we see uh, similar designs replicated. And I, I say similar and replicated because they're in a very similar style using the same design elements, but they aren't a direct copy, I don't think. I don't think this was a stamp that was applied. We can see subtle differences like the angle of the stag's leg and the orientation of the wild boar. Even the dogs themselves are a little bit different. And then, of course, as we travel back to the lock and the hilt, we have some more simple floral and leaf pattern designs. Overall, a neat little piece of hunting history. I think, uh, you know, this comes from an era where hunting had a little more panache, maybe a little more style. I think, uh, if possible, we should bring this back uh, to this year's hunting seasons. I think it... Uh, <laughs> If nothing else, I think it'd make us uh, feel cooler sitting out in the woods waiting for a big buck to come by. I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about this or anything else related uh, to what I'm showing you here this week here at the Rock Island Auction Company, please visit the Rock Island Auction Company social media pages. They're posting a lot of great high resolution photos of this and many more pieces that they have going through the halls over the next couple weeks. I don't think you'll be disappointed please visit ilovemuzzleloading.com to learn more.
Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.